So uh, welcome everyone to the panel discussion on shifts in higher education from the perspective of students from disadvantaged backgrounds. And I'm happy to say that we have a diverse team of Akansha alumni from different academic disciplines and institutions, both in India. And we are going to discuss the effects of key reforms in the NEP, that is the new education policy, especially for students from financially constrained backgrounds. Uh, so, uh, moving on, I'll first uh, introduce myself. Hello, everyone. I'm Kusha Agrasate. I'm currently working with the Kangsha Foundation in the alumni department as an associate. I'm also I'm an alumnus of the first school of the Kangsha Foundation, that is the KC Thakre Vidyani Ketan School. I recently completed my graduation in a Bachelor of Arts with specialization in English literature. Uh, so here's what we are going to do, guys, uh, for all you panelists. There's the first question that we have that uh, if you are going to go back to your higher education, when the NEP is applicable, what are the shifts from the NEP that you would really like to have in your higher education? So that is the bit. So first you'll give your intro of yourself and then you will try and answer the question. So moving on, I'll start with my answers first. The first thing that I would like to say is that really excited me during uh, the reading of the NEP was the multidisciplinary approach. Uh, the, the aspect straight away comes to my mind because when I was studying uh, the concept of uh, colleges such as the UWC, the Azim Premji, the Ashoka University, really excites me because it helps the students uh, a lot of freedom to choose from the uh, different subjects that they have. Uh, maybe like imagine having a physics with a literature or a chemistry with computer languages. It is something very cool that we can learn and uh, we can explore different fields rather than having the rigid structure. So that is one approach that I would really uh, would have liked to have from the NEP. Uh, second is the emphasis on the research part that the NEP has given this day. Uh, I, I would really say like uh, be honest. Uh, I spent three years in my graduation and when I look back. Uh, I see the knowledge part being very low. So uh, I'm someone who would like to research a lot going forward. And that is something I would say the NEP is really focused on and uh, is going to be very important because it is a good thing going away from the rigid curriculum that we have. And the uh, third thing I would like to third and the last thing is the moving on from the outdated curriculum. Again, taking an example of my own self, uh, when I enrolled into uh, getting a degree in English literature, uh, I felt that I would uh, learn a lot of uh, focus on how to write different stuff, how to explore the different ways of writing, uh, how to uh, write according to different styles of English literature, the evolution of the language. But that was something uh, that didn't happen at all. I, I, I would just mark up things and write into my answers. So that is something uh, the curriculum will really help. So yeah, that was from my side. Uh, I would uh, now request uh, Swapnil to go ahead and introduce himself and answer this question for us. Thank you. Hi, thanks Sakushagra for having me on this panel. I am Swapnil. I am currently working as a software engineer at Walmart Global Tech Services. I recently completed uh, my B.Tech degree from National Institute of Technology, Karnataka Suratkal, and ITK. And I am an Akanksha alumnus, and I was part of the Akanksha centers that was started by Akanksha, the very first centers. So the like key aspects to talk about NEP are the vocation, focus on vocational uh, courses. So vocational courses, as I have uh, been in college in 11, 12, have been very important in building uh, great importance to onset experience. So I think uh, if I was uh, I was in college when NEP was introduced, NEP would have been in place. I would have loved to take uh, vocational courses such as photography, electrical maintenance. These courses would have got me on site experience, which I would have personally loved to have. Uh, the second most important point I thought of NEP was about the multidisciplinary approach. Uh, so I especially like uh, maths as well as political science. So as I was more fo to focused towards maths, so I chose to pursue engineering, but I would have also loved to pursue a minor or some other course in political science. 
so if NEP was implemented, it was in place when I was taking education, my higher education, I would have loved to take political science as my minor subject. So these are the two things that I would have loved to take uh, during my uh, higher education. Uh, thank you, Swapnil. Thanks a lot for sharing your views. Uh, moving on, um, Runal, can you please share your views as well? Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me on this panel. I am Runal Khadge. I am also an alumnus of um, Akanshad's first school, KC Thakuri Vidyaniketan School. And I completed grade 11 and 12 in the United World College in Singapore. And I'm currently an undergraduate student at the Bennington College in Vermont in the United States. Um, and in the past, I have been an active debater, speaker, and participant at uh, inter-school debate competitions and at the Model United Nation Conference. Um, I'm also a performer. Um, I love to dance. Uh, I'm also a choreographer. Um, I am uh, the leader and the founder of Dance It Out Dance Club at my college here. Um, and in the past, I've also led the International Student Committee um, here in Bennington. And currently, I am the museum assistant at the Robert Frost Museum um, again in Bennington. And uh, now to answer the question, um, I would say that uh, I have I have grew up in a multidisciplinary kind of environment when I was in Akanksha school, and to be able to, I have not uh, I have not uh, pursued my higher education in India. So if I were to go back, I would say to be able to. Um, learn in a multidisciplinary environment on a bigger scale under uh, NEP would be an enriching experience uh, because I think coming from a, a quite a, a disadvantaged socioeconomic background myself, um, learning through NEP would give me, would lessen the pressure that uh, of, would lessen the pressure of learning very fixated mainstream um, field uh, with the prime aim of having future financial stability without uh, actually having holistic development or skills. Um, and I think an AP would definitely uh, boost uh, my knowledge towards that. Um, and if I, I, would, I was to take courses under an AP, I would have loved to take this unique combination of environment, video and dance. Uh, which are the courses I'm doing here right now. And just experimenting myself in these multiple fields would have broadened my uh, understanding about, about uh, globally, the global understanding. And um, I would have created my own uh, paths, my own way of thinking, rather than thinking in the same um, fixated way uh, if I would have taken a very basic mainstream field and it would have allowed me to be more socially and morally aware. Um, and apart from academic courses, I think the vocational courses uh, and internship opportunities that I would have got, gotten under uh, NEP would have boosted my, um, my soft skills, which are a key in every aspect of life, no matter which field you study in. And just this freedom and the opportunity of experimenting with myself and exploring myself would have uh, maintained the curiosity and creativity inside of me. Just like, like when we were kids in kindergarten or uh, primary schools, we were given the freedom and had the opportunity and we, we were inquisitive about things. So I think an, an EP would definitely uh, bring more such opportunities um, if I were to pursue education, uh, higher education in India. And Secondly, I would say uh, the efficiency of resources and uh, faculty that NEP uh, promises is, uh, again, a key because I think uh, the, the approach of faculty and the quality of faculty really determines uh, students' approach towards how they, students' approach towards studies. Um, and I think to have a resource, a, a fruitful resource to rely on is a key which I think is lacking in the Indian education system because students don't have the resource that they need. And I think an EP will be promising that. So I think that would definitely boost my confidence in what I'm learning and I would make better and clearer decisions. And lastly, um, 
I would say the uh, criterion based grading system is is commendable because uh, I would focus on uh, the areas of improvement, my areas of improvement rather than getting stuck up in the grading system, the numbers and the percentage. Uh, I think that's a better way of um, knowing and finding uh, my own potentials. Uh, and just this uplifting environment that an NEP would create would make it uh, less of a rat race for me and more of a learning process. And I think that is important to, uh, to have the skill-based knowledge for a lo longer run than just focusing on knowledge-based learning. Uh, thanks a lot, Purunal, for that uh, amazing sharing experience. Uh, yeah. Uh, so the la uh, lastly, coming to Namrata, you can go ahead. Um, hi, everyone. I'm really glad to be on this panel. And um, so I studied in an Akanksha school in Pune. Um, it's called AVBS. And another name for it is School of Leaders. That's my favorite name. And um, after that, I studied in UWC in Armenia. Um, in the Lishan. And um, after that, right now, currently I'm studying in um, St. Olive College in the US. And um, I am pursuing a bachelor's degree in biology. And this is my senior year. So this is my final year and I'll graduate after this. Um, other than academics, I'm really interested in dancing and um, just like similar to what Mrinal said, um, I also like along with two of my friends formed a dance club on campus. Um, it was a Bollywood dance club and right now I am very interested in learning piano and ukulele so I'm thinking of buying one. Uh, so I'm into music now. Other than that, I have been like an active uh, like member of the United, like model United Nations um, on all of my campuses uh, like the college that I went to in Armenia and um, the one in the US and even in school. Um, now to answer the question, um, I would say that, you know, building off of what um, Swapnil and Rinal have already said, I think having um, the multidisciplinary like, um, like education um, would really help us to have more hands-on experience and more experiential learning and add on to like the theoretical like uh, knowledge that you, people like, I mean, students receive. Um, so I think having that perspective and having an understanding of what it looks like to um, have an internship and actually uh, know in detail about what you're learning in class and actually um, apply your skills um, at your job, at your internship, would be really helpful for students in the future so that they can really decide what they want to become and um, have a better understanding of the world. I think another um, point to add to that is that, you know, there is so much happening globally right now uh, in terms of uh, politics, you know, there's so much political change around the world. Um, you know, um, if any look at like, like, you know, science perspective, so much is happening uh, in terms of climate change. Um, plus, um, there is a lot of changes in like technology. And I think having such an education would really help us um, have an understanding of all these uh, like uh, perspectives and um, different like, uh, like sources of knowledge that we need to have uh, in order to become like, you know, um, a better um, citizen of the world, I would say, um, so that we have a an, an better understanding of, uh, of our surroundings um, and are able to make better decisions in our lives. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's, that's all I have to say. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you so much everyone for sharing your views. It was uh, great uh, for me. I, I used to just see it from my perspective but seeing from everyone's perspective or from different uh, backgrounds, disciplines, and from different educational systems. Uh, it's really great to hear that. Uh, so thank you. So now uh, we'll move on to the next question that we have. And since Pranal and Namrata are already studying and I've been studying a lot in uh, the foreign universities, I would like you both to answer this question for me. Uh, so yeah, the question goes, uh, will est establishing campuses of foreign universities further the inequity in the higher education in India? Uh, so that is the question. I would request Runal to answer this first. 
Um, yeah, sure. I think in my opinion, um, there is no definite answer to this. Um, I, I for sure have pursued my education through a foreign university and I've also kind of my first step towards uh, a higher education of foreign university was through United World College Mahindra, which is in Pode. Um And many of other Akanksha alumni have also studied there and are now studying in the US. Um, and I feel like establishing campuses of foreign universities might make, I mean, in my personal experience, make people think that the education, that level of education is the ideal one or the more superior one. And most of the students who uh, pursue their uh, education through foreign universities tend to, um, pers uh, tend to learn internationally and study abroad and then eventually learn and uh, use their potential outside India. But then on the other hand, such, such foreign universities and campuses give students, especially students uh, from um, disadvantaged uh, socioeconomic background, um, a chance to gain global knowledge and global perspective, um, which increases their potential and also it gives them the opportunity, opportunity to use that potential for the betterment of their work in India. And I would say um, just uh, 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 that is the thing that is uh, included in NEP of establishing India as a global study destination and increasing the interaction with global institutions can, I think, help normalize the establishment of foreign university campuses in India and hence like lessen the comparison or the inequity uh, between higher education in Indian universities and foreign universities. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, Namrata, you can go ahead with your answer. Uh, so, yeah, Namrata, you can go ahead with your answer. Yeah, um, I think that establishing such like institutions um, would be helpful, but I think in a way it would further the inequity because um, of the like financial status of a lot of students, you know, like uh, for a lot of students, um, if they're coming from um, low income families and they're not able to pay um, for this um, incredible education that is out, will be out there, um, but will be really expensive. Um, I think it would be really difficult for some, some students to um, pay off um, the, the tuition for such education. And even though the NEP mentions that, you know, there will be, there will be like continuous financial support uh, for students, um, it is even then difficult to ensure that all the students that have uh, registered to be um, in school and uh, for let's say a four year program for a bachelor's degree, that they continue their education. Um, because if there is a sudden lack of um, like tuition, they might have to drop out. And then I think there, that, that is, there is that concern. I think another um, thing that I was thinking about was if we were to implement this plan, it will take a couple of years. And I think to establish um, these programs into the education system that we already have of having like a bachelor's degree and then a master's degree, um, um, the way the NEP uh, like puts it down, I think it would create a big gap um, for like for for India to produce like the next set of professionals, let's say doctors, engineers, because um, people will need to get used to this type of education. And then um, a liberal arts education is what um, in a way the NEP is like promoting. And that takes a longer time for um, students to become professionals in their like specific uh, fields. So I think this gap that it would create uh, would be problematic in a way because yeah, it will take a longer time for us to produce, like for India to produce um, a certain number of doctors or engineers or uh, people from other professions um, that are needed uh, to support the country um, in like different fields, yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, so uh, I would like to say when I uh, look at this question on uh, the prospect of furthering the inequity, I somewhere believe uh, the inequity already exists in the Indian education system, even if we eliminate the foreign universities. Uh, we, we still uh, deal in uh, questions like this is the top college or not, are the students going to study well in this college? So that inequity is going to exist. 
But as I see this, uh, the aspect of foreign university campuses in India, I, I see it as a three-way deal. Uh, firstly, uh, why are we talking about the NEP? It's about the students. Education is about the students. So students are the main stakeholders. So I, I somewhere believe students are definitely going to benefit from this uh, prospect. One thing uh, that is uh, about the finances, uh, of course, uh, uh, the education will be expensive. But one positive that I see out of it is, uh, I guess Munnan and Namrata will agree with me that uh, a lot of students uh, might have the money to pay the college fees, the tuition fees of a particular foreign university, but they cannot afford the standard of living that uh, the foreign country offers. And that is where a lot of restrictions do come in for a student that even if I can pay the college fees, but I, I can't pay my rent so my food for my food, so I, I better study in India. So uh, that is one aspect I would say of a three-way deal that the students are definitely going to benefit. Second part is, uh, I love how the NP focuses a lot more on peer learning, not just in students, but among institutions as well. Uh, so it, it promotes that if a particular institution specializes in a one subject, it, it would help the other to grow along with it. So uh, uh, for the HEIs, that is the High Education Institutes in India, those who are budding institutes, budding universities, those who are really willing to learn and grow. This will be a great opportunity to learn with the experts. And since foreign universities are already expertise in uh, the liberal way of the studying or the multidisciplinary way of studying, and where this is where India is trying to go, I would say this would really help. And also, uh, the NEP states that uh, it's trying to make the grading system of the foreign universities or the certification system of the foreign university is useful in India so that uh, there is not, nothing such as a difference between the system so that the students don't suffer even if they want to come back from abroad and quickly start their education in India. So that is the, the second aspect where the universities is also uh, going to benefit from it. The third way that I see, I, 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 like this is a very light or maybe a, a vague idea that I see, but uh, still I would uh, state that. Uh, this would create a, a very healthy competition between the universities that already exists. And uh, they would try to increase their standard of study. And this is somewhere with, something that is going to help curb the commercialization of the education that the NEP also envisions to do. So uh, I see this is a three-way deal, uh, looking uh, at it from a lot more positive perspective, I would say. Uh, so the next question is about the multidisciplinary institutions. I would like Pranal and Swapnil to answer this. Uh, so the question is here, there is a lot of focus on creating multidisciplinary institutions of higher education. Uh, do you think it is beneficial or will it create mass generalists with no specific skills? Okay, so I would request Swapnil to go ahead and answer this question. Uh, yeah, I think uh, it is beneficial to have multidisciplinary institutions of higher education in India. Uh, like especially the reason for this is that when we have to make decision of take choosing the stream like we are not sure enough like after completing a 10th standard in the current system like we're not sure enough as to what career we want to pursue and what are our actual interests are so we might have multiple interests at the like 10th grade like i wanted to pursue maths as well as political science both the courses uh, but we didn't have a choice of that during that time so I think introduction of multidisciplinary higher education system would uh, like enable students to take decide based on their uh, multiple interests they have. And there are many other opportunities like uh, they can switch into the subjects that uh, NEP has, is also offering. So that is a really very point, a really good point. And uh, NEP, uh, as it said, like multidisciplinary op benefits are that uh, a student, if his he starts to pursue a course, and if in the between he thinks that, uh, yeah, the course is not really good for him, and he thinks of switching to a su other subject, that is a really uh, like current situation. In current situation, many students want to do that because many students, after coming at a point, they think that yeah, this this is not going in a good way. I think I should switch to a other subject which might be more interesting for me. So I think that uh, benefit will be there if the multidisciplinary institutions are introduced in India. And uh, like 
with the introduction of multidisciplinary uh, education there is a more responsibility towards student side because they have to be more responsible towards their decisions that they'll be making because they have multiple choices now and now they have to make better decisions so students will be more responsible towards making decisions and for that there should be a more uh, better career guidance sessions for the students like now nowadays we don't have enough career guidance sessions going on for the students to decide as to what actually can lead them to a certain goal or what their interests are we still have students who like drop out in higher education the the conversion ratio is very low like from higher education from school education to higher education system so that is what something uh, this multidisciplinary uh, institutions might help in so students can opt for multiple uh, courses at the beginning and then they can switch in between and then get, then they can change their subjects and they can uh, pursue multiple courses and multiple skills at the same time uh, the concern that you rose that about the skills yeah i agree that based on the current situation like many uh, indian graduates don't have the uh, enough skills to be uh, employed in the multinational companies uh, so there is a concern that yeah while pursuing multiple skills there might be a like de- uh, you can't focus on one particular skill and you can't enhance in or excel in that skill at a, such a level that you are employable in that uh, particular uh, field so i think there uh, the academic curriculum can be managed in such a way, such a way that there are more are more focus over the internships and practical experience and uh, and a focus towards uh, multi dimensional learning that can help uh, students be actually skilled enough to get employments in the multinational companies so i think that is a uh, concern that actually we uh, government can work on as well as students have to be more responsible towards their uh, decisions during this uh, be- benefit yeah that's it so thank you thanks a lot uh yeah uh, so i agree with most of what softman said uh, so yeah, i'll first like to now to share our views on this question. um um i'm i'm actually studying in a liberal arts university and uh, students here are not supposed to pick majors and minors and we are actually supposed to come up with the a combination of uh, different disciplines that we are interested in and would like to pursue after graduation and um in the beginning i definitely enjoyed this freedom uh, in my first year i enjoyed the freedom and experimenting and taking random courses to just check where my heart really goes but then eventually i started getting confused and i was just kind of all over the place i didn't have any precision uh and i started questioning my choices and this way of learning and there was a point where i thought that i would rather go back to a uh, studying uh, the three mainstream fields of commerce arts and science to avoid this confusion and it would be much easier it would have been much easier for me then but then towards the end of my sophomore year i realized that i was able to make clearer decisions to what i really want to Uh, learn about because i had uh, i had experienced so many different things so i had the option of really connecting with one course or one type of interest so i think that that really helps in a multidisciplinary uh, environment um and because you have tried so many uh, different um, things i feel like connecting with you can really precisely know what you're attracted to and driven by and then follow that path um and i feel like uh, just like what sapneel said um i have worked on uh, multiple internships and the skills i learned through them are not directly uh, related to the to the courses i'm taking now but they are not all waste they are definitely important in other aspects of life and the other work that i will be doing in future so basically confusion uh, will occur whether it is multidisciplinary uh, multidisciplinary institution or not but i feel like learning getting confused and learning multiple things and skills uh, would make students uh, make better decisions like swapnil said and um, and be true to what their interests uh, true to 
what their interests are rather than blankly following just one direction without knowing if you are truly into it and enjoying it uh thank 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 you so much kunal for that uh, and just uh, to close this question uh, as i've already said in my previous answers i'm quite a fan of this multidisciplinary approach from the very first even before the nep came uh, just a quick uh, closing note on this question uh, I, i recently saw a video of the late actor sushant singh rajput speaking on something and he said we were at a stage where english was very like a compulsory thing to learn if you wanted to thrive in the professional world going forward in the 2 to 3 years or 5 years we'll be at a stage where uh, the computer language so the coding will be something that is going to be absolutely mandatory for students or the individual to thrive in the professional world so currently we are at the stage where we cannot predict what kind of professional jobs or professional roles that the students will be applying for in maybe say year 2030 or 2035 and so the educators right now they really don't know what the, what to prepare the students for so what they are going to apply for in the coming 10 years so that is where i would say this approach comes in very handy because the students will have three to four skills at their disposal and like just maybe one or at the max two skills so that is something that was going to help the students with really going forward uh, quickly telling my own example i studied i graduated from a degree in english literature and that is I got absolutely nothing to do with the professional role that i got uh, the thing that i excel in my role is the data management skills or the event management skills that i acquired apart from my formal education and and that is something I'm, from my own experience i would say is a uh, very helpful so definitely a multidisciplinary approach should be there uh, as i said i agree with swapnil that the students need to be more responsible going ahead taking how how they choose but again uh, a 10th grade is not something where we want students to finalize a stream and go ahead with it uh, they need to have a lot more freedom and they need to be at a certain age to select a particular stream for uh, for that uh, so yeah i would say uh, that is all for the questions part and i would say a big thank you to all our panelists today it was really exciting to know the different views on nep i had i had a certain specified views and i really wanted to discuss it with some and i'm glad that i had students from different backgrounds as i said earlier as well to discuss this with to hear this view uh, hear the views Uh, of course uh, we have a limited time otherwise we had a lot many questions i know you have a lot of views to share still uh, so yeah uh, before we end this uh, uh, we all have shared uh, quite a bit po- uh, positive views i would say on this uh, new education policy uh, before we end uh, just two questions for all you panelists and for all our audience out there so the first question is although the nep looks quite impressive on paper will it be implemented in the same manner and if not i feel it it is going to lose out on the impact so the first question is will it be implemented the same way it is stated and the second question that i feel personally is extremely important is the timeline of the nep states that the objectives of the nep will be fulfilled by the year 2030 or 2035 that is 10 to 15 years from now will all the aspects stated in the nep even if they are implemented perfectly have relevance even after 10 to 15 years from now and that is in a rapidly changing world right now so those are the two questions that i would like to leave you with of uh, the panelists of course maybe you can think more on those questions and of course our audience so yeah uh, that is all from us uh, a big thank you for all those who have uh, taken efforts to organize this and again a big thank you to all our panelists for being here